artist. I'm Jana Lasorg. I'm here tonight with Sheila Turner Cartledge of Asta's Art Gallery, home of phenomenal art. And I have to say, Sheila, having been there now, I can attest to <laughs> the phenomenal <laughs> capability of the artists that you have in your gallery. Can you tell us how did the gallery come about? Well, the gallery started in uh, 1998, October of 98. Um, we, we started in a, a 1,000 square foot space. Uh, we progressed to another 1,000 foot square, square foot space. And then we were fortunate about a year and a half ago to move into a 5,000 square foot, which is located on uh, Springfield Avenue in Maplewood. Well, and I have to tell you, I was really odd because when you walk in, first of all, the way you designed your gallery space mm -hmm. is very warm and welcoming. Kind of feels like you're coming into someone's home. It's, you know, it's like a living room aspect in that you're immediately comfortable and you just mm -hmm. want to explore and sort of sit down and savor the art. But the real special find is your garden outside, which <laughs> I can't wait to experience in the summertime. Well, thank you. So this space really has opened up a lot of opportunities, I would think. Oh, it, it definitely has. Uh, we get all sorts of compliments all the time regarding the, the space, as well as the Sculpture Garden, which was just opened in June of this year, in last year. In June of uh, 2005. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, I know that you and your husband, Alonzo, run the art gallery, but previously, you, and actually still currently, you run a travel agency, right? That's correct. So can you explain to us how the art gallery sort of grew out of your travel company? Well, what happened was uh, we started doing theme cruises where we brought entertainment on board. And because we ourselves were lovers of art, uh, we decided that it would be nice to have art on board and also bring the artists on board. Yeah. Uh, we know now that, you know, when we go on cruises, there's art there, but there's not necessarily African-American art. Uh -huh. So we wanted to bring that element to the cruiser, mm -hmm. especially the clients that we were servicing. So we decided to do that. And uh, the first big uh, theme cruise we had was 10 years ago. And it's been, we've been doing a, an annual cruise ever since then. It's called Cruise the Night Away. Cruise the Night Away. And obviously, the, the response to the art must have been outstanding for you guys to then create a separate mm -hmm. second business just based around the art. Yeah, that, that's correct. Um, people always came to us um, thinking that we would have the answers to art, their art questions. So uh, I was still working for the federal government. And I said, oh, it would be wonderful just to have an art gallery. And pretty much that's basically what happened. Uh, uh, we spoke to our dear friend who uh, was Esther Sibilis at the time. And, and I want to mention, uh, not to, <laughs> but you told me this story, and it really got me very emotional. Esther is now the namesake of your gallery. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, Astor Sibylis was a very dear friend of ours, and she was our banker, mostly dealing with the travel agency at the time, but believed, I mean, we were full, my husband was a college administrator, and I worked, I was in a top-level managerial position with the federal government. Mm -hmm. She really believed in us and thought we could do anything. We had the travel agency, and she kind of pushed us to opening the art gallery. Unfortunately, she passed away only five months after we opened the gallery. We opened the gallery, it was called a Sisters Art Gallery. A Sisters Art Gallery. A Sisters Art mm -hmm. Gallery. And then what we decided to do after she passed unexpectedly in March, we decided to rededicate the gallery and rename it Aster. And her actually her name was A-S-T-E-R, uh -huh. but we decided to name it A-S-T-A-H. And the reason for that is because our spiritual friends and leaders had told us that the A-H was with God. Oh, so right. really, the meaning of the name is Aster is with okay. God. And when I first met you, what was remarkable after your name change, your business seemed to take off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, You were did. with God. Oh, yes. Yes, I think uh, we feel that she's definitely watching over us every step of the way. 
Um, she's we have your angel. Yeah, she's our angel. Yeah. And she, right before she passed, uh, she had given my husband uh, a tape, a CD, and she said to him, I want you to listen to this tape. And he said, what are you giving me this thing for? And she said, I want you to listen to it, and I want you to listen to the words. Mm -hmm. And it turned out it was the song from R. Kelly, which was, I Believe I Can Fly. And really, it's, it's scary, it's strange, but at the m most unopportune time, that song, that song <laughs> will come on, and it starts playing, uh -huh. and things just start happening in the gallery. And we have it in the studio tonight, sort of. I believe I can fly. <laughs> That's right. right? That's uh, right. This beautiful painting behind us by Frank Morrison. That's correct. Is dedicated. Yes, is dedicated to Astor's memory. That's correct. I That's believe correct. I can fly, and and the dove here, you release doves mm -hmm. at the ceremony to honor Astor. Right. What happened was um, when she passed, the funeral service that they had in New Brunswick. She, her bank was in New Brunswick. She lived in New Brunswick, so she was really special to the New Brunswick uh, community. Mm -hmm. Uh, she worked with Crossroads Theater. She worked with a lot of different people. So when she passed, what they decided to do was to release doves. Mm -hmm. And when Frank created this piece, I Believe I Can Fly, while he didn't actually leave, put a dove, he said I would just incorporate the bird Very because nice. it was I Believe I Can Fly, and that's what we decided to name it, I Believe I Can Fly. Well, and I have to tell you that um, I, I was struck in meeting you and mm -hmm. in touring your gallery how most of the pieces seem very inspired and a lot of them very moving. Mm -hmm. I myself was very struck by Bisa Butler, one of the right. new artists that, you're, that you feature, mm -hmm. right. and Jerry Gant, whose sculpture I was hoping to see tonight, mm -hmm. but I'll have to go back into her gallery <laughs> to get. Um, and also, you know, our, our theme tonight is kids in the arts. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show mm -hmm. is because you, in my opinion, host one of the most important youth arts shows mm -hmm. that I know of in our region. It's called the Youth and Art Show. That is correct. And right now you're receiving submissions from artists, from student artists. Right. And what is the area? Is it all of New Jersey? Well, we probably couldn't incorporate all of New Jersey. Although you might have to soon. But <laughs> we might have to. But we did all of Essex County, which was all quite extensive. So we sent out letters to the principals and the art teachers. And all the schools. And all the schools. Because we want the children to be sponsored by their art teachers. Okay. So we feel that if they believe in them, then we believe in them. So we're, we're receiving the submissions. We have a number of artists that are going to be judges. Actually, Tanetta Bell, who the piece behind me, uh -huh. is a, an emerging artist, and she's going to be one of the judges, oh, as well as Stephen Ellis, who actually grew up in Maplewood. Oh, good. So, uh, in addition to those two and some of the sponsors, they're going to look at the art, and they're going to come up with the final selections. We're going to give out nine awards in the art and sculpture category, and nine awards in the photography category. Oh, wow. Nine in art and sculpture, so that would include painting, exactly. collage, exactly. Okay, and then nine in the photography, exactly. Oh, and we've gotten terrific. a lot of calls from teachers already asking us about their submissions. Can they submit this? Can they submit sculpture? I have one teacher who says she has beautiful sculptures that the children did, and we're just looking forward to seeing them. Now, what is the age range of the students who submit? We're taking second graders up through high school. Up through high school. Right. And do they compete in their own age groups? They do. Okay. Uh, we're taking uh, the grade schools, middle schools, and high school. Okay. So that's the, s the nine categories. It's three awards in each. Each category. Right. It's a first place, a second place, and an honorable mention. And I might add that we have a number of banks that are participating as sponsors, mm -hmm. and therefore we're able to give a monetary award to the students. Oh, that's very nice. Based on their awards. Once they win the awards, they're going to get a monetary. So in each category, two or three students receive awards? Each category, well, there will be three. There'll so there will be nine. Okay. And then the photography, which is a new area which we broke out 
from last year. Oh, we, that's we good. incorporated all of them together last year. Okay. This year we broke out the photography. The photography was so good. I heard that. We decided to make it a separate category. Well, and what was stunning to me too in, in learning more about this what, was that you sell the student's art yes. at the ex exhibition. Actually. And, and it sold pretty well. Didn't it, it? Yes, it did. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. was also amazing. Yeah. And I think it's a boost to the students. When the, it, the reason for doing this is so that the students would have an, uh, a fine art gallery yes. that would display their artwork and treat them as if as they were pr practicing artists. Practicing artists. And in fact, mm -hmm. uh, your winner last year, didn't she go on to art school? Actually, she got accepted into Pratt as well as Temple wow. in their art programs. And she was the first place winner in the high school category. Oh she graduated. So. And how many uh, um, applicants did you have last year? How many submitted? Ooh, we had 100 submissions mm -hmm. of art, and we selected 60 pieces, okay. which we matted, framed, and hung on the walls of Astor's Art Gallery. Oh so my goodness. So I can't even imagine what this year is <laughs> going to be like. I think you might expect at least double. Yeah. I know it's going to be big. And I want to point out that there is a public reception for the Youth and Art Show. It's March 18th from 2 to 6 p.m. And that day, will you also ha feature one of your arts workshops that you do? We, um, just not on that particular okay. day. Because uh, I know on Saturdays, Sometimes you offer arts workshops, right? To teach right. people how to buy art, exactly. what to look for. Exactly. We just had one this past weekend, Investing okay. in Art. Investing in Art. Right. We do that. Um, that Saturday will be all for the children. Okay. And it will be like the Academy Awards because no one knows who the winners are until we actually oh, announce them exciting. on Saturday that's afternoon. Very exciting. So there will be a lot of squeals and giggles and <laughs> excitement. So. Well, I'm thrilled. I will be there. Uh -huh. I hope you will join us. March 18th, 2 to 6 p.m. is the public reception at Astor's Art Gallery on Springfield Avenue. The exact address we are showing you, but it's also 1897, 1897. Springfield Avenue. And the exhibition, by the way, will run for the public through the 31st of March. So from the 18th through the 31st, mm -hmm. just stop by Astor's during your open gallery hours, That's and you right. can see the students' artwork. Thank you for coming in tonight. It, again, it's, it was a real pleasure to see your art gallery, and oh, I'm thank coming you. in the summertime to hang out in your garden. All right. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. Absolutely. We'll be back. Mr. Studied algebra in school and got a better job than I could. You take the last call. Uh, no, 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 Mr. Stuck in an entry level job because you only learned basic math. I don't have a boss riding my butt like you do, so you take it so you can get back to your desk. <laughs> you know, I probably should, but maybe Miss AP Calculus with her $200 haircut and the big office upstairs would like a cup. Oh, no, Mr. What was your name again? Never mind, it doesn't matter. I'm too busy doing important things to care. I just came down for some sweet and stir. <laughs> You know, if my limited math abilities weren't keeping me from getting a better job, I'd quit this afternoon. I don't blame you. But thank goodness you're stuck here because we really need someone to make the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> are March 25th and 26th. About 700 people try out, singing, dancers, uh, actors, and musicians, and uh, you can go to njpack.org. 
So right now joining me is Amy Patternight, who is the producer of Arts of Maplewood Kids Concerts. And uh, she's also a friend, and it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, thank you, yeah. Jana. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you tell us, like, how did you, now you're a parent, yes. and you've lived in Maplewood for a while. You've worked in music, like myself, for quite a while. Too long, yes. Yeah, too long, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and you came up with this idea to do kids programming in, in Maplewood. When did this occur to you, and how did you put it together? Well, I... Many of my clients are cultural institutions in New York City where these kinds of shows go on. So I've worked with many artists who are uh, big on the kids scene at Symphony Space um, and Celebrate Brooklyn and Prospect Park. And I always, you know, schlep my kids into the city to, to go to the shows. And it was fun and all, but everybody knows how what a drag it is to schlep your kids yeah. and, and deal with the traffic and the parking and meals and I just thought the extra costs just, yeah it's, it's kind of you know depending on how many kids you have and the ages are sometimes you just you know it's just too much mm -hmm. to, to do so I said wouldn't it be great if you know we could have this kind of stuff in town and then I said well gee I, I know some of these people and I've worked <laughs> with their managers before so and they wouldn't know it be me. great if I right. made it happen so now I said instead of you know having these concerts where they book them and produce them then they call me to and hire me to publicize them uh, now I can just do everything and hire myself. It, it's fantastic. It really is. And, and I agree with you that it's, it's sorely needed. Um, because even though SOMA, we have a lot of arts activity going on in our community, there really hasn't been a lot targeted directly to the interests of kids. Right. Well, and, and also, that, I mean, there are some stuff, but not on like the national level. Like the artists that I've tried to book for this uh, inaugural series have national presence. That's a good point because your first concerts, which sold out, uh, featured yes. Dan Zanes, right? Dan Zanes and Friends, who is which like the Bruce Springsteen of the kitty that set. That made me laugh. The Bruce Springsteen of the kitty set. Yeah, that so made me it's laugh. It's true. He was the former, he was the leader of the Del Fuegos? Yes, he yeah. was the former lead singer of the Del Fuegos, and his concert, much concerts, uh, there were two shows, 11 and 2, on February 26th, uh, sold out a month in advance. Oh my God. And I was shocked beyond all belief. Which definitely shows the the, des the desire that was out there for people to do exactly right. what you said. Stay right. in our community, have a good time with their with their families, and, and not go to the expense and hassle of going into the city. Right, and especially because Dan is such a big name uh, and has a big following in Brooklyn where um, we're originally from. Yes. Um, I, w I really wanted to make sure that people in our community were able to get tickets. I was afraid that once people found that it was on sale, they we'd would get come everybody our way. Right, we'd get everybody from the city <laughs> in Brooklyn and uh, the you know the other areas uh, coming in. So I really made a concerted effort to get the word out to like the, my PTA at uh -huh. Clinton Elementary, and um, to get out you know to friends and people uh, in friends, neighbors, people in the community, and it was a word of mouth. Uh, a Effort. word of mouth thing. So I'm happy to say that you know a good, probably 85 to 90 percent of the ticket sales went For to people here, local people. But definitely wow. there are people from Brooklyn, Staten Island, Coming the city, in. Long Island, coming yes. into Maplewood for this. Somebody from Long Island actually called and said that she really was interested in learning about this neighborhood, and she was hoping perhaps when she comes out here, she's going to look around. And oh, I was see, like, I thought maybe I could be a realtor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I could lure them in. I think and we have enough jobs. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's true. So. And there's definitely enough realtors in this town. Now, your next show is April? April 2nd. A April 2nd, and that's Arturo O'Farrell. That's Arturo O'Farrell, who is, as you know, yeah. an icon in, in the Latin music world. His father, Chico O'Farrell, mm -hmm. led the Afro Jazz um, uh, big band uh -huh. at Birdland yep. for many years. And as luck would have it, my husband books Birdland, the Jazz Excellent. Club on West 44th there Street. There you go. In addition to being a PhD student at NYU and teaching at NYU, so he in his spare time before working <laughs> on his dissertation, he books a jazz club. And so he could help bring so, Arturo in, which, right. and by the way, the title of it, I, I hope the kids definitely get Arroz con Bebop, right? Yes, Arroz con Bebop. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a show that Arturo developed uh, through working with Jazz at Lincoln Center, um, teaching Latin music to kids. Okay. And then your final show is May 7th, May 7th, right? with Rebecca Frezza and Big Truck, who's a Montclair mom, and uh, I believe a music, she was a Music Together teacher, and now she's out doing her and thing. Her and her CDs play on XM Satellite Radio. I and mean, she's on Noggin, and she has a, a big following, actually. Uh, somebody turned me on to her uh, at Milk Money, a, oh, yes. our 
local uh, store yeah. in, in Maplewood who yeah. happens to be one of my sponsors and she said you have to check out this this woman and and speaking of your sponsors you got some pretty impressive sponsors I have to say yes I, yeah. I realized that in order to do this I needed to raise some capital uh -huh. and I really thought since this is a community event let me go to the community yeah so I went uh, I went first to my bank thinking you know banks have a lot of money and I went to Bank of New York, which in Milburn, where I do my, my business and, uh -huh. and personal banking, and uh, some, did a marketing proposal. Had a friend who's a real marketing whiz in South Orange, who yeah. you know, um, on Dean uh, Abrams, sure. look at my marketing proposal. She helped me spruce it up. And uh, I got about a dozen or so sponsors, um, Bank of New York, wouldn't you know, on Springfield mm -hmm. Avenue, the Toy Store. Um, Where people can buy tickets. Matthew, right? yes. Okay. Uh, Matthew and Beth, they're fabulous. They've been selling tickets for me. Okay. Um, it's been really great, and also stories in motion on okay. Springfield Avenue, which uh, Ann Biddle runs, which is great, and she's well, selling tickets too. Well, it's clear that this would be very appealing to you for sponsors. I mean, it, it attracts families, and right. it really helps, you know, s just cement the the community together. I think it's a really nice full circle for everyone. Now, two last questions for you. One, do you plan to do a fall series? Ask me May eighth. <laughs> uh, okay. I've already actually, funny enough, I've gotten lots of inquiries from okay. artists. You know, I calling me, wanting to sure. send me their press kit, yes. their CDs. Yeah, it, it's great. Um, you know, I sort of took this on as a as a side business for me right now. Um, you know, I'm getting very involved in education and government, and okay. I'm not sure where, what path I'm going to be on, and. What well, I'm we be hope doing, you do it. I, I, I may do it. Okay. I may do it again. Otherwise, we'll look forward to it next spring. And secondly, do you have any plans to feature some student musicians, some kid musicians performing for kids? Um, perhaps. That's a, you know, I would definitely, uh, definitely consider. You well, know, keeping my options open. We have one in the studio tonight I who understand. might be a good, a good candidate. Definitely. Uh, we have Red in with us tonight, and they're an incredible ensemble percussion group, and they're going to come in and play for you right now. Dylan. of the ensemble, Enrique, yeah. and Russell. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. So Dylan, can you tell us, how did you guys come together? Well, we all met in marching band, and we're the three snares in marching band. He's one of the top bass drum players. And we all just decided to start a percussion group together and because we were so interested in marching band, and we just wrote some stuff together and came up with this piece. And this piece that you just performed, you wrote, is that right? Or you guys, you guys all like, and it's yeah. fantastic. So, and you guys kind of all like fuse into it at some point, kind of get your own viewpoints into it. Kind of. Yeah. We have yeah. Like our own little solos at the end that we we made up ourselves. It wasn't something. <laughs> I'm curious who does the choreography. 
Like, it was like, it was kind of, it was kind of written in it was kind of written yeah. into it. Really? Like the arm yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, was yeah. written into the piece. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, is Stomp an influence at all? The well, yeah, like I remember like when I was like writing it and all that, I was thinking of Stomp the whole time, so yeah. there's a lot of different segments of Stomp kind of put into this, like different takeoffs of it. Right, 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 because uh, that's kind of what came to mind for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious too, like Drumline, the movie Drumline, did you guys take anything from that? Because that also springs to my mind. I, I guess you could say that, but like, Drumline wasn't the weren't the first people to do bass taking, even though everyone thinks that because it's the first time that anyone's that ever That they've really seen, seen it. it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So is it a regular activity in marching bands? Not all marching bands. Okay, okay. We just have fun doing a lot of stuff. So, Red, are you guys playing anywhere around South Orange Maplewood, around Selma? We have played, we played at 1978 Arts Center, we played at different, we played various places, but like, we were thinking about playing at Dancing Goat soon. Good, good. Some different stuff. Well, I hope Rock that Water. from having seen you tonight, you might get many calls. Maybe even from Amy Patternight, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> so, Dylan, what's the next tune you're going to do to close out our show? It's something that we pretty much wrote ourselves, actually. It was a drumline thing that has been going on in, drum on in the drumline here for a while, and we kind of rewrote it two years ago <coughs> because we, it was all new drumline people. Uh -huh. We just listened to it and kind of rewrote it ourselves. Oh, last question. We've got to know this. Ha the, the name Red. Oh, um, when Russell, Enrique, Russell, Eric, Dylan, Dylan and Adam. But we got to add you in. Then. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, we were the snare line. We were the snare, the snare line of marching band. We've been together for a while. We just kind of decided that we would call ourselves Red. All right. Russell, Eric, Dylan. Well, Let's Red plus A. Yeah. And All right. We, we, wanted to start a custom, <laughs> we wanted to start a custom group. We got Adam. We couldn't really find a way to fit Just the right. A. Just Red. Yeah. R-E-A-D. Well, thank you again, and please take us out.